This is Mrs. Sims. I hope you're doing well. I have a new selection for you this week that those of you who are into history will really enjoy. It's a Caldecott book, and it touches on something that you may have heard about, or maybe for the older ones in the group, maybe it's something you've already studied about in a lot of detail. The book is called Henry's Freedom Box, A True Story from the Underground Railroad by Ellen Levine. This is a Caldecott book, which again tells us that it's a great selection for children. All right, here we go. Henry Brown wasn't sure how old he was. Henry was a slave, and slaves weren't allowed to know their birthdays. Henry and his brothers and sisters worked in the big house where the master lived. Henry's master had been good to Henry and his family, but Henry's mother knew things could change. Do you see those leaves blowing in the wind? They are torn from the trees, like slave children are torn from their families. One morning, the master called for Henry and his mother. They climbed the wide staircase. The master lay in bed with only his head above the quilt. He was very ill. He beckoned them to come closer. If he beckoned them to come closer, it means he called for them to come closer. He wanted them to move in uh, closer to him so they could hear. Some slaves were freed by their owners. Henry's heart beat fast. Maybe the master would set him free. But the master said, you are a good worker, Henry. I'm giving you to my son. You must obey him and never tell a lie. Henry nodded, but he didn't say thank you. That would have been a lie. The setting, of course, is, the, is during the Civil War time. when black people were treated as slaves. Some of you have heard about this time period. Many of you, if you're older, have studied it. I do have some questions. I'm going to ask you 10 questions at the end. Some of them are going to require writing. So if you need to go ahead and get uh, paper and pencil, that's fine. Later that day, Henry watched a bird soar high above the trees. Free bird, happy bird, Henry thought. Henry said goodbye to his family. He looked across the field. The leaves swirled in the wind. Henry worked in his new master's factory. He was good at his job. Do not tear that tobacco leaf, the boss yelled at the new boy. He poked the boy with a stick. If you made a mistake, the boss would beat you. Thank you for the input on the different lighting and different things that I've been trying in here just to make it a little bit different for you. 
keep giving me your, your feedback on this. This would be great to help me. Henry was lonely. One day he met Nancy. Nancy was shopping for her mistress. They walked and talked and agreed to meet again. Henry felt like singing, but slaves didn't dare sing in the streets. Instead, he hummed all the way home. Months later, Henry asked Nancy to be his wife. When both their masters agreed, Henry and Nancy were married. Soon there was a little baby, then another and another. Henry knew they were very lucky. They lived together even though they had different masters. But Nancy was worried. Her master had lost a great deal of money. I'm afraid he will sell our children, she said. Henry sat very still. We see him here playing the banjo, talking with Nancy. Henry worked hard all morning. He tried to forget what Nancy had said. His friend James came into the factory. He whispered to Henry, Your wife and children were just sold at the slave market. No, cried Henry. Henry couldn't move. He couldn't think. He couldn't work. Twist that tobacco, the boss poked Henry. Henry twisted tobacco leaves. His heart twisted in his chest. At lunchtime, Henry rushed to the center of town. A large group of slaves were tied together. The owner shouted at them. Henry looked for his family. Father! Father! Henry watched his children disappear down the road. Where was Nancy? He saw her the same moment she saw him. When he wiped away his tears, Nancy, too, was gone. Henry no longer sang. He couldn't hum. He went to work, and at night he ate supper and went to bed. Henry tried to think of happy times, but all he could see were the carts carrying away everyone he loved. Henry knew he would never see his family again.
Many weeks passed. One morning, Henry heard singing. A little bird flew out of a tree into the open sky, and Henry thought about being free. But how? As he lifted a crate, he knew the answer. A crate is a wooden box. He asked James and Dr. Smith to help him. Dr. Smith was a white man who thought slavery was wrong. They met early the next day at an empty warehouse. Henry arrived with a box. I will mail myself to a place where there are no slaves, he said. James stared at the box, then at Henry. What if you cough and someone hears you? I will cover my mouth and hope, Henry said. By the way, Henry's Freedom Box is a true story. Dr. Smith wrote on the box to William H. Johnson, Arch Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Henry would be delivered to friends in Philadelphia. Then he printed on the crate in big letters this side up with care. Henry needed an excuse to stay home or the work boss would think he had run off. James pointed to Henry's sore finger, but Henry knew it wasn't bad enough. He opened a bottle of oil of vitriol. No, cried James. Henry poured it on his hand. It burned his skin to the bone. Now the boss would have to let him stay home. Dr. Smith bandaged Henry's hand. They arranged to meet the next morning at four o'clock. The sun was not yet up when Henry climbed into the box. Ready, he said. James nailed down the lid. Dr. Smith and James drove to the station. The railway clerk tipped the box over and nailed a paper to the bottom. Dr. Smith begged the clerks to be careful, but they didn't listen. They threw the box into the baggage car. Hours passed. Henry was lifted up and thrown again, upside down. He heard waves splashing. This must be the steamboat headed to Washington, D.C. The ship rode smoothly, but Henry was still upside down. Blood rushed to his head. His face got hot. His eyes ached. He thought his head would burst, but he was afraid to move. Someone might hear him. I'm tired of standing, someone said. Why don't we move that box and sit on it, said another. Henry held his breath. Could they be talking about his box? Henry was pushed. The box scraped the deck. Now he was on his right side, now on his left, and suddenly right side up.
What do you think is in there? said the first man. Mail, I guess, said the other. I am mail, thought Henry, but not the kind they imagined. Henry was carried off the steamboat and placed in a railroad car, this time head up. He fell asleep to the rattling song of the train wheels. Here you see Henry inside the box. And you see the other people around him. The train wheels would be shaking along. And Henry would be safe inside. He awoke to loud knocking. Henry, are you all right in there? All right, he answered. The cover was pried open. Henry stretched and stood up. Four men smiled at him. Welcome to Philadelphia. At last, Henry had a birthday, March 30th, 1849, his first day of freedom. And from that day on, he also had a middle name. Everyone called him Henry Box Brown. Questions will be ready in just a minute. Arthur's note. In the mid-1800s, there were about 4 million slaves living in the United States. Slaves were owned like tables or cows or wagons. Historians believe between 60,000 and 100,000 slaves escaped to freedom, traveling on what was called the Underground Railroad. The Underground Railroad wasn't a real railroad. It was all the secret ways, ways that slaves made their way from the south to the north. They hid in carts, rode on horseback, walked hundreds of miles through forests and swamps, and crossed flowing rivers in summer and ice-bound rivers in winter. Conductors and station masters hid them and helped them throughout their journey. When Henry Brown climbed into his freedom box, he hoped he'd be carried to a safe world. He brought along a small tool to make air holes. That way he could breathe while he was in, inside of the, of the crate. A little water and a few biscuits. Henry arrived in Philadelphia having traveled 350 miles from Richmond, Virginia. He traveled in 27 hours. His story made newspaper headlines in America and Europe. Henry never found Nancy and his children. In 1850, he went to England, and there are some reports that he married again. We do know with absolute certainty that Henry Box Brown became one of the most famous runaway slaves on the Underground Railroad, the man who mailed himself to freedom. Okay. I have a few questions for you, starting with number one. Everybody who was born has a birthday. How would it feel to not have a birthday? How would it feel to not have a birthday? Number two. What would you miss most if you couldn't celebrate your birthday? What would you miss most if you couldn't celebrate your birthday? Number three, have you ever celebrated your birthday on a day other than your official birthday date? So if your birthday was on March 1st, have you ever not celebrated your birthday on March 1st? The next question is if that happened to you, if you celebrated it on another day, please write three sentences about when you had your birthday on another day and why you did it on another day. Question number four. 
A slave may not know who his parents were. But if he had any brothers, or he wouldn't know if he had any other brothers or sisters, even where he was born or when he was born. This is still question four. Do you see how a boy like Henry would feel disconnected or cut off from other people because he did not know how a family works? We learn how a family works by being in a family. Do you see how a boy like Henry would feel disconnected or cut off from other people because he did not know how a family works? Yes or no? Number five, do you think Henry showed courage by mailing himself? Do you think he showed courage by mailing himself? Number six, how was Henry's choice to mail himself dangerous? How was that dangerous? What could have happened to him in the course of that, of that journey? You might list a few things that could have happened to Henry on that trip. Number seven, what dangers awaited a shipping box like Henry's box? When you think about his box, what things could have happened to a wooden box like that from the time he was put inside? That's question number seven. Number eight, can you think of three jobs or careers that require you to be courageous? This would be a modern time job that someone might have that would require you to be courageous or brave. Explain how these jobs require courage. So if for one of your three jobs that you write down, for number eight, if you think policeman, being a police officer, um, would be a job that required courage, then you might want to write um, that word down, policeman or police officer. But there are lots of jobs that require someone to be courageous. We're thinking a lot now about first responders and also about doctors and nurses and medical personnel who are working in the hospital um, during this time with the virus. All right, three jobs or careers that require you to be courageous. Explain how these jobs require courage. So if you thought that a job as a nurse required courage, then can you write me a few sentences about how it requires you to show courage, to be brave? Number nine, think about the Bible stories that you have heard. Please write down the name of three Bible characters, Bible people who showed courage. You don't have to tell me how, but I want to know three characters that showed courage in the Bible from, from Bible stories that you have heard. Number 10, what would you be willing to do to escape to a location, a place, where you could be free? This one's hard and it'll require some thinking because we have such freedom in our country um, to be able to make choices. And some of those freedoms are being kind of pulled back a little bit because of our situation with the virus. So I need you to think about a time that doesn't involve the virus in particular, but a time where you could think about what you would be willing to do to escape to a location where you could be free. Okay, thank you very much for letting me share Henry's Freedom Box, a true story from the Underground Railroad.